Hi, it's Kevin Gilligan with Geeks Out and FlameCon and the Geeks Out podcast. Uh, joining me uh, today uh, from the wonderful and sweet animated movie that is uh, now out on Netflix is Arlo, uh, from Arlo the Alligator Boy. It's Vincent Rodriguez the Third. Hi, everybody. <laughs> That's all the virtual applause and cheer. Um, wow. We came, with, we came with an audience, man. Did you hear that? It sounded like a yawn. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's a delight to see you again. Um, we were blessed to have you uh, as a very special guest um, at FlameCon uh, a couple years ago or a few years ago. What is time anymore? Um, <laughs> um, who knows? Who knows? Um, people also yeah, may remember you from... Uh, uh, crazy ex-girlfriend uh, as the wonderfully sweet uh, Josh Chan. Um, just a personal note, uh, I was one of my favorite shows and my, my fiance's favorite show and you were one of his favorite characters. So, Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks to you and your fiance and to anyone else out there who watches Crazy Ex-Girlfriend because we, we have a lot of fans out there and they're so loving and warm and I, yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate that. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Well, we, 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 we enjoy and appreciate your talent. So, and, and you as a person. So, um, but let's, uh, let's dive right in, uh, with, uh, uh all about Arlo the alligator boy. Um, yeah. so we're just going to say there's going to be some spoilers. If you have not watched the movie yet, um, please, uh, go to Netflix now and tune in. Um, it's, a very sweet movie and very heartwarming. And um, yes, I will, I will leave it at that. Um, so let's, cause, cause you appear about uh, two thirds of the way through the movie. Um, yes. And so um, your character is uh, Ansel, Ansel Beauregard, um, which is a, yep. just a lovely name. Um, <laughs> so my, my first question is what, what do you hope the audience takes away from Arlo and Ansel's relationship? I hope the audience takes away from their relationship the sense that it's not too late to move forward and to hope and dream. You know, Ansel comes from this, uh, you find out more about his history, but when Arlo meets him, Arlo has to thinks he's going to meet his dad and it's going to be great and it's going to be perfect. And he's uh, Arlo is such an optimist. That's one of the most beautiful things about his character and something that I think we'll all relate to because he represents that childlike innocence. Um, when we, you know, when we were kids where anything was possible and you feel that so viscerally when you, um, when you meet Arlo, even before you, hear him or see him it's it's beautifully done um and the music has a big component has a, a plays a big component in that but when you meet Ansel he come he you don't know what his um childlike history is but you do see where he's at and that's I think that kind of throws Arlo off and you find out that Ansel comes from this place of knowing and I'm gonna be in control and I've created I've created my life and no one's gonna take this away from me and he really kind of denies his past and that includes Arlo and you know it takes and then of course that's not how it ends but um and it's a lot happier than that uh but it's really beautiful to see the men that can occur that to, to see to see someone so full of hope and someone not so full of hope and filled with fear and essentially they inspire one another and they meet in the middle and what happens of what happens from that is this blossoming effect in the movie, which kind of leads us into the series, which is what's cool. Another cool thing about this movie is that after the movie comes out, there's going to be a whole TV series called I Heart, called I Heart Ar Arlo. And you'll get to follow Arlo and his new group of misfit friends who is now his family. And his dad has a part, Ar Ansel. I get to have a part of that. And it's this beautiful journey of people kind of getting second chances and also finding love for themselves, accepting who they are and finding importance and growth in friendships. And it's, it's just so beautiful. It's, it's really, a, it tugs your heartstrings and it, it, it 
there's a lot of laugh out loud moments too. Um, for any of you who are New Yorkers, uh, Kevin, do you still live in New York? Because Flame oh, yeah. was in New York, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Greg and I, uh, my husband and I, um, we met in New York and I spent over a decade there and um, he lived in, he's lived in New York for a long time. And there's just some New York jokes that we just, every single time we have to laugh. Um, there's just so much joy in, in this story and in how it's told. Um, it's, it, it, I, th I think the way, that, the best way to kind of summarize it is it feels like something we need right now. But you, you'll feel that. And in the music too, you'll feel like, oh, that's catchy, it gets in my ear. But it, it also makes me feel love and hope and joy. And um, it's interesting because it's, it's an animated movie with music and it, these are some brand new songs. So there's not that familiarity like uh, like you're listening to the radio and hearing you know a cover of something no these are brand new songs they push plot and they're they were music produced by our amazing music producer alex um, garingas um i didn't want to mispronounce it uh and he wrote the songs with our showrunner and creator ryan Krigo. so they wrote the music together and that that's one of the elements of, of it actually too of Arlo the Alligator Boy that really elevates this whole level. The music just, oh, what's the, what's, there's a phrase I used to use because I don't know if you've seen Once on Broadway. It's a beautiful musical that I think everyone should see and, and hear yeah. or both or one of the two, whatever you can get. But I remember when I saw that musical, I thought to myself, they, the music was directed in such a way that it, it needled its way into my heart. And, yeah. and it opened my heart up. And that's the feeling I get when I listen to Arlo, which is probably why I have been watching it on more than one occasion, <laughs> maybe a few occasions, maybe <laughs> just listening to it on Netflix on my phone. Yeah. Cause I got the, you know, the code to watch it before the premiere, right. um, before the premiere this Friday, April 16th. And uh, it's just so catchy and it's, I love it. <laughs> I can't wait till the, series, the, the TV series comes out because there's more music, but like, go ahead, Kevin. Oh, no, I was going to say, yeah, like there's something about, you know, there's a lot of like kids uh, programming, like kids, uh, like animated or, um, and, and musical programming that um, sometimes it's a little treacly. It's a little, you know, or it sort of talks down to kids. And there's not that with this, with this movie. Um, it actually, and like, being an adult watching it, you were, you're, you're transported back to a younger time, you know? Um, like I, I, I'd seen it um, once. Um, and then I, when I came, I was out of town and I came back um, and I watched it again uh, last night with my fiance and like just watching his face and just like the wonder coming to his face and just like these sweet moments. Um, it really, it just sort of gets you. And I really appreciate it about that, about this movie. Um, but I want to say, um, you sort of touched on it a little bit. Um, you know, there's a lot of sort of queer coding and parallels to queer culture in, in this movie. And, and like oh, one yeah. thing, of, one thing of note, like particularly with, with your character is that, you know, he is this, this older character who has been shamed into hiding who they are and who is inspired by the younger generation of, you know, literally his, <laughs> his, his offspring, yeah. his son, Arlo, yeah. to <laughs> embrace his difference and to live life as his authentic self. Um, did you, Vincent, um, did you ever feel pressure to hide aspects of yourself? And, and if so, what led you to live without that fear? Man, Kevin, that's a great question. Yeah, I mean, I I knew I I knew I was different uh, since I was a kid. Um, not just being happened to be gay, but uh, you know, I was in Asia. I, I was Filipino, and thankfully for me, that was not the minority in the in the neighborhood I grew up in, which was very Latino and and, and black people and and a, a lot like various Asian communities. So a lot of the kids in my elementary school, uh, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, Cantonese, 
Filipino, um, and even all throughout junior high and high school. You know, I grew up in Daly City, California, this suburb of San Francisco, which in San Francisco is like the gay mecca, as people would say. Uh, it's you know, it's it's a beautiful city, and it's and um, just you know, so, so much. So there's so much history behind San Francisco. But even with that being just like a you know, an exit or two away, I still, yeah, I mean, when I was growing up, I didn't quite know who I was, I was still figuring it out, I was scared, and I had shame, and, um, and it, it took, it took a lot of, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I could say soul searching, because I don't think as a kid, you know what soul searching is, right, but I definitely was similar to Arlo, I was looking for something, I, I had this wonderment of, like, what else could be out there for me and what do I feel in my heart and what brings me joy and what do I love who do I love and just trying to understand how I was feeling and what was going on with me and um it took me a, once I realized like what was true for me I think what helped me come out of my shell and accept who I am was seeing examples of that around me and my friends accepting me um uh you know hearing from my parents like in college like hey we know and we found out and we still love you and you're always gonna be our son and I'm just like oh my gosh you know that's such a scary thing for a kid but um I I think that that's such a beautiful parallel that I that I feel that that I have with with Ansel in having that fear of like oh what do I do if people really see me for who I am and what's beautiful about that for anyone is once you make that decision, what's happened to you from that moment up to that moment is like old news. What happens moving forward because now you're, you're kind of a more authentic version of yourself, a fuller version of yourself. Ansel has been carrying this weight for so long and and part of that weight of shame was also about his son. And now that he's met his son, he, it, it takes time, but that he rips that bandaid off and he, he, he chooses vulnerability, which is, takes a lot of courage, actually. Um, talk, talk to the military and all the, and the NFL, like courage, vulnerability and courage, man. Um, it, 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 vulnerability is for the strong. You know, and um, and I think that's the other thing that we find in this story too, is that there's so much strength in in being true to yourself, and in finding your community, and in um, building the relationships around you that help you feel like y- you belong and that you are loved for who you are. And I love that, and and that's what's cool about it too. Like I know there are. It, there are, there are definitely inclusive themes of acceptance, you know, and we have you know, Jonathan, Jonathan from straight, um, Career for the Straight Guy on the show too, and he plays this amazingly fun character that you're not expecting. That's great. Um, a, little, a few Easter eggs in there too for um, <laughs> just for him alone. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's just just even just the way the characters are written too. Like there's there's a sense that the world that Ryan was creating was this world where humans and animals and things these alive things i'll call them things exist and they're different and there is a separation between humans and these animals half animals half things half human things and there's a place where they meet in the middle and so he's kind of recreated what our life is what society is like but framed it in into this two-dimensional animated film and it reads so well. And but but like you were saying, Kevin, it doesn't talk down to the to kids. It's actually written in a very adult and kind of smart, quick-witted way. Um, it's paced for today's generation of kids and families who want to watch something together and who want to be not only entertained, but they want to feel something. They want they want to be taken on a ride. They 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 want they want to feel represented and they want to smile and that's what the the Arlo the alligator boy does it makes you feel seen and I think it reminds you that we're all in this together and there's always hope and there's always light and it's never too late that's that's well put I, I would you know 
one thing that, that sort of comes across in this is um, finding your chosen family. Um, yeah, I love, isn't that cool? Yeah, and I like, I was wondering like, you know, you, you, you talk about acceptance from your family. Um, do, do you have, do you have a chosen family? And, and how did they come into your life? It's so funny, like you said that and I just started to tear up a little bit because, because that's, I feel like that's every person's journey. You know, like when you're going through, when you're a youth going into the teen years, you feel a little like what's going on, who can I trust? And your parents who were there for you your whole life, they kind of become not the number one in your, in your circle, you know? And then you end up looking outside for like who, aside from the people I grew up with and who raised me, who, who can I surround myself with where, and, 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 and feel like I belong and that I'm accepted and, and I'm cared for, you know? Like, not like I'm perfect and there's nothing wrong with me, but like, I wanna grow and become a better version of myself and accept myself, love myself, but who's gonna help me do that and see that? Right. Um, I, for me, it was like, it's just my friends. Uh, at a click when I was in high school. That's what I, literally what I called them. That was my little nickname for them. And my mom would say, are you hanging with the click tonight? I'm like, yes, mom, I'm hanging with the click tonight. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I remember that was, that was part of it. And um, from my journey of finding acceptance and finding my, my chosen family. Um, I also loved martial arts. So uh, throughout most of my childhood, I would go to martial arts class after school or, or um, and there was a point where it's just like after school every day and then like Saturdays for like four hours especially when I was training for like my black belt tests and stuff so I had various kind of chosen families but when I became an adult that's when I became so much more aware of that chosen family and realizing like by picking them you're picking people who will embrace you and who will challenge you and kind of call you out on your stuff, whatever that is, you know, want to hold you accountable, but still love you, right. you know? And so, um, it, so it's cool to, to watch this movie. And as Arlo is, as we're just watching his story unfold, you're seeing him, you're like reliving your own childhood when, or your adulthood, when you found your chosen family, but you're watching him live through it. And you're watching him meet all different sizes, shapes, species of, of, of friends. And he talks about them like they're just perfect as they are. And he loves them for who they are, differences and all, and or words and all, as they say. And yeah, um, yeah it's, 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 it's not something you're expecting either. So, so like when you do watch it happen, there's that, like you said, there's that warmth that, that almost like not gooey, but you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. you feel like all the warm fuzzies inside um, without getting too schmaltzy. But it's also like it, 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 it energizes you um, seeing seeing one celebrate their their own belonging to their chosen family mm -hmm. um, is inspiring and it's uplifting. And also that's not, that's not an uncommon thing. You know, and we yeah. see we, all, all the time, like whatever your interests are, like I, when I, I, there was a time where I was really into barbershop. <laughs> I love barbershop music. So I, my barbershop music friends, I'd see them once a week or I'd be traveling the country and singing with different courses around the country. But then I also did musical theater for a, a lot of my career. Um, so I traveled the country and I lived in New York for over a decade. And so I had like that little community and then I became an adult and then I had friends who lived all over the country and we would see each other on trips and stuff. And so that became another chosen family. So you're seeing like, you, so yeah, there's just so many parallels. And, and but, but when you're, when you're watching it, it's, it's, it's just, such, it's such a fun thing to experience and like be witness to, yeah. you know, you don't expect it to like really correlate to you. Like you're not expecting to relate to it. Right. And all of a sudden you're watching it. And like you, you said, when you're watching it with your, with your, uh, with your hubby um, or, your, or your boyfriend, but like they all of a sudden just like you're in it, your heart's in it. And, yeah. it's, and, and you just feel that connection to Arlo and, and his, and his, his, his chosen family and his 
literal and his family, family, his actual family, like yes. blood family, blood family, family. yes, yes, his blood family. <laughs> um, well, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing that journey uh, with the I Love Arlo or I Heart Arlo series, um, and and seeing your character come into his own and. Uh, hopefully getting the, a chance to see what him embracing uh, his authentic self uh, changes for him. So, um, you know, cause I know I was watching it and I was like a little heartbroken, like seeing like that he had been living, that he's been alone. Like he thought he could find um, acceptance and, and, you know, uh, friendship, uh, you know, in the upper, uh, you know, society and, you know, with money yeah. and success, but that it, yeah. Yeah. it was, it was sort of like a, uh, not exactly this, but like a hollow victory kind of thing. Like, you know, you have all of this, but if you don't have, you know, acceptance and love, then what's it worth? So. Um, yeah. Family. Like you need a family, you, you need your family, your people, Yeah, your tribe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, if again, if, if you've watched this and you have not watched Arlo the Arlo, uh, Arlo the Arlo, uh, Alligator Boy, can't speak. Um, I do highly encourage you watch it. Uh, hopefully, this will spur you to, to to check it out, and and stay tuned for uh, I Heart Arlo uh, coming soon to Netflix as a series. So. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll see when that comes out, but. The premiere for Arlo the Alligator Boy is this Friday, April 16. So after you watch it, guys and gals and everyone, you know, keep your eyes peeled for the series because there's new songs on there and a lot of fun adventures. And to answer your question, Kevin, you you will totally see how Ansel uh, fares with his new life and being a dad for the first time and those challenges and figuring out like what life is like when you expand yourself from just kind of money affluence and being so focused and driven to kind of opening up and focusing on the people you love and the friendships and the community that you've attracted to you and and your family chosen or blood family but just having that 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 sense of community it's yeah. it's pretty awesome i i can't i like I, I, I could, I had to, before this interview, I had to like calm myself down. It's like, man, I'm so excited about our little, the music is so good. I was just, just be chill, be chill, be chill. Um, because it's, it's just really a powerful piece. It's what we need right now, man. And it's, I'm really excited for, for everyone to go see it. So I hope you see it, you watch it, you listen to it, you download the music and you have it on repeat. Like I definitely will and have been. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Awesome. Well, Friday cannot come sooner, which yes. I think is tomorrow. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, it's tomorrow. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Vincent. It, it was a pleasure to see you again. Uh, you know, virtually speaking, uh, and hopefully, uh, we'll be able to see you again at a at a future FlameCon or uh, another uh, event, or at least to talk about I Heart Arlo. So. Yeah, that would be lovely. I'd enjoy uh, that. Thanks, man. Uh, well, uh, thanks again. Um, give give our best to your husband. And uh, Thank you. um, everyone, uh, check out Arlo the Alligator Boy. Uh, when this airs, now on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, Netflix. <laughs> Thank you.